Welcome back, folks, to more Edna and Harvey. Just realized that for whatever reason, when I start to record, the game decides to shut the fucking music and language all the way down. Very interesting. And go fuck yourself. Hello, stranger. Before you say anything, please take a deep breath. <gasps> and is that what freedom smells like? Or is it just regular air consisting of oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, soot from the asylum's new chimney, and a touch of diesel oil from the garage? Ah. <sighs> <sighs> I don't want to seem melodramatic, but I'm somewhat skeptical about this so-called freedom. Ever since Dr. Marcel started neglecting his duties as head of this asylum, it's us, the patients, that carry the burden of creating our own boundaries. And before I'm able to measure up to this freedom, I do have to ask myself a few things. Maybe there are such things as good boundaries. And even in an ideal case, can I really decide where my own freedom starts and stops? It so happens that no one is preventing me from leaving the asylum. Does that mean I'm free? Can I just fly away, spread my wings, and leap from the asylum roof? The urge is there. Just like any bee, I long to buzz across fields of flowers collecting honey. But I'm still fighting it. Something about this freedom stinks. So yeah, I do apologize for the low sound volume issues, that's because Fraps is fucking stupid. Just jacking the volume all the way up. The in-game sound should be the most predominant sound, not my voice. Now take a hike, B-Man. Mmm, that smells good. But even if the illusion is almost perfect, it's only artificial flavors and chemical esters. An almost perfect illusion, but not real. Like with everything here in the asylum, it's only a half-hearted attempt to trick us into thinking that we're free. And now that no one is stopping us from leaving the asylum, it provides us with a welcome excuse to refuse to leave. Right you are, stranger. I'm just running away from my responsibilities. The responsibility to myself to accept the deal that the world out there has offered me. I thank you. I've made up my mind. I can't just sit around here doing nothing anymore. I should buzz across fields of flowers and collect honey. Toodaloo, asylum. Hey-ho, freedom. Lily was glad that she had helped the bee man. Soon he would be in a better place. See you, bee man. Lily had often wished to go to the zoo to feed the animals. It was even more beautiful than she had imagined. The moths had done a superb job. Lily knew that you could use starch to stiffen up laundry. It wouldn't hurt to give it a shot. Well, who said it? Now Lily had a stiff towel with holes. Are you actually dead? Uh -uh. Too bad. I could use a little entertainment, but the doctor told me not to talk to other people. At least not living ones. Sorry. But I'm going to have to ask you to leave.
First we're going to unblock Sharp Object Restriction. Oh dear, Lily really had managed to ruin the sheet. But perhaps a sheet with two eye holes could be good for something. Got us a little KKK uniform. Oh wait, it's a ghost costume. My bad, Negros. Yikes! A ghost! How sweet! Finally someone to talk to. You have to help me. Dr. Marcel is wrongfully keeping me here in the asylum. Isn't there anything that you and your ghost buddies can do about it? Curse him? Deprive him of his sleep? Drag him into the seventh circle of hell and torture him for all eternity with red-hot needles? Oh, come on. I've done so much for you. I've performed obscure rituals, sacrificed chickens, danced naked. Although when I think about it, I'm not sure if it was really a ghost that asked me to do that. Ugh. I don't feel so well. Could you please take off your head while we're talking? Uh, uh. Oh man, you're not very talkative. Can't you help me at all? Uh-huh. Great, look at this. The doctor is forcing me to knit these stuffed rabbits. No idea what he needs them for, but I'm not very good at it. Maybe you could lend me a hand. Wait, I'll push some of the fabric through the hatch. What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You obviously understand the basic principle. Go ahead and use the red urinal as much as you like. What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You obviously understand the basic principle. Go ahead and use the green urinal as much as you like. What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You are go ahead. What do you have? Let Oh, you are go ahead. All right, we got all the fabrics. Alright, so now what we have to do is make the food items for each person. Adrian mixes, uh, likes red and yellow colors. He wants tomatoes, no blueberries on his pizza, so he needs green tomatoes. How about that? Green tomatoes. Peter likes red and green colors. He wants blueberries, no bananas on his pizza. Red and green makes blue, so he should have some yellow blueberries. How about that? Yellow blueberries. Petra mixes yellow and green colors. She wants broccoli, no tomatoes on her pizza. That bitch needs blue broccoli. How about that? Blue broccoli? And Droggle Jug mixes green and blue colors. He wants bananas and no broccoli on his fucking pizza. He wants red bananas. How about that? Red bananas. One spermy margarita pizza, please. All right, so we need some blue broccoli. Blue broccoli. Yellow blueberries. Yellow blueberries. Some red bananas. Red bananas. Some green tomato. Green tomatoes. To hook up our little D and D players with this shit. Ah, oh, 
the pizza. Well then. Mmm. Superb. Superb. Great. I wish I were as good on the phone as you. Struggle jug. And Peter is satisfied too. Satisfied? How can I be satisfied in such a world in which the only moments worth living for are those when the pizza arrives with the right toppings? That means yes. We owe you one. Peter almost starved to death. It's not that bad. I've already lost all hope of dying honorably anyway. Druggle jug. Well said. Now that the food is taken care of, let us begin the game. Don't you want to play too, sweetie? You'll see. It'll be incredibly fun. If you take pleasure in such excessive self-degradation. The Antidice Cup. Druggle jug. Uh-huh. So be it. Then follow us. Into the world of Hoth Mottigor. Your group has set up camp near the infamous Goblin Gorge. Lily found herself in a clearing. The campfire was crackling, and the wind whipped through her clothes. You can hear the war drums of the goblins in the distance. This is your last rest. Before the great battle, Lily did in fact hear drums. An enormous army seemed to be waiting for them in the nearby mountains. Wait, are you telling the story or am I? Uh, what? It's just that I see that you don't have the Dungeon Master screen in front of you. And I'm pretty sure that the Dungeon Master is recognized by his Dungeon Master screen. That's ridiculous. I'm the narrator. I don't need a... Well, then why don't you be the Dungeon Master then? I'm curious how you'll do without any battle value tables or source books. What? But, but that's... That's what I thought. And now, move over. Ow! Hey! It's... You can't just... Where was I? Oh, yes. You're here on the orders of the king to drive the goblins from the gorge. There are rumors that the goblins have dammed up the Pink River. This has turned Hothmotagor's most important memorial into a reservoir, the Valley of Unpleasant Memories. Also sitting at the fire is a mysterious local guide. You're tired from the journey. But sleep is far from your mind. Goblin scouts could be lurking anywhere. The black magician Petrula, the noble Sir Drogalot, and the amusing juggler Snippo. I want a different role. Yes. Are gathering their strength for the battle. Only the Amazonian barbarian warrioress Lilligrim. Huh? That's you. Only the Amazonian Barbarian Warrior Lilligrim is restless. It's your move, Lilligrim. What will you do? Um... Hello, Lilligrim. Would you like to be amused by my funny prank? Then watch me. Juggle and that one ball. Are you amused? Um, yes, it doesn't just look like it. I am actually juggling only one ball, and I know how ridiculous that must seem. My character sheet said that I... <clears throat> I, the comical Snippo, have the marvelous ability to juggle 55 balls at once. That's what she said. But as said. much as I would have liked to imagine what such a thing would look like, the mysterious traveler thought I should just juggle one ball instead. That's what she said. Because it's much more contemplative. And as long as my shame or boredom doesn't cause me to spontaneously combust, then I'll stick to that. If you have a better suggestion... Uh-uh. Yeah. That fits the picture. Apparently, I'm cursed with having to make a fool out of myself for all eternity. It's just like reality. No. You think I should try it without any ball? You found the only way to increase my boredom even more. On the other hand, if I juggle without a ball, I might be able to take a quick nap. No one seems to object to sleeping around here. 
give me your balls. Petruida, the black musician. Um. Don't startle me like that. Can't you see I'm watching the kettle? Um. If you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm brewing a diabolical magic potion, of course. Well, it's actually a calming tea. I really wanted to conjure some coffee demons, but they don't let you get any sleep. And we do need our strength for the battle. Now I have to watch the kettle before it starts to whistle. The traveler has such sensitive ears. <coughs> Um, don't you want to see? Uh-uh. I wonder why. Because I'm really exhausted. Oh, if you're staying up anyway, do you think you could watch the kettle? Uh-huh. Oh, great. Then I can finally get some sleep. As you know, we need our strength for... Oh, oh, for the... Oh, oh. Hello, Lilligrim. You're still up. You should get some rest. I'll keep guard and make sure the fire doesn't go out. <laughs> Don't look so grim. Your thirst for action is honorable. But the mysterious traveler is right. Strength lies in tranquility. Lilligrim felt like screaming at the brave Sir Drogalot. She hadn't traveled all the way to Goblin Gorge just to sleep. But something kept her from losing her temper. Fuming, she turned away from her companion. Her eyes fell on the quiet traveler who had listened to the entire conversation. Was that a smile she saw beneath the hood? Are you as tired as I am? Nighty night, bitch! Alright. The legendary army of Hoth Mortigor. A little girl with braids. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> oh. Why so angry, little girl? You're not here to declare war, are you? It would almost make a pleasant distraction, putting your feet up and drinking tea all the time. In the long run, it's not good for my goblin army. But why should I sound the horn for battle? My scouts took like a bunch of fucking potatoes with companion. carrot dicks for noses, you not goblins. Possibly think you, you can, can defeat my ass. army with those dopes? I hardly think so. As long as we are not being attacked, I'll stick to the advice of this friendly traveler. Wait and see, and drink tea. <gasps> Lilligrim was boiling with rage. She was very close to throwing a tantrum, but something was holding her back. <gasps> but, but, what's got you so worked up? Ah, you spoke to the Goblin King, and now you're furious because there's not going to be a battle. Aren't you happy that I found a peaceful alternative to fighting? Uh-uh. Yeah, but what are you going to do about it? I've already got your friends wrapped around my little finger, and as long as everyone stays calm, that's how it's going to stay. 
Just face it. I've got it all under control. And as you know, throwing a temper tantrum is just bad behavior. So be a good little barbarian warrior ass and take a nap. Fuck you! You see a large cauldron. Roll for perception. You discover a safety valve. Sweet. You see roll. You dis. It's a. That's all I can. Good. The ball was stuck, but the pressure in the cauldron still wasn't enough for something to happen. You try putting the logs on the fire. Roll for sneak and hide, so Sadragalot doesn't wake up. Done! The logs were in the fire. Little child, what are you doing? This noise can't possibly be good for the group harmony. Without wanting to rush you, maybe now is the time for controlled, well-considered action. If you proceed with required calm, I'm sure you'll be able to defuse the situation before there's a disaster. Uh-uh. I really must insist you stop making that sound. Can't you see that you're threatening to destroy the idyllic car? Fucking goblin army. To arms! They've declared war on us! Sound the horn! That sound I have to keep calm. Enough! I can't take it anymore! This noise is driving me crazy! I'm losing control! To arms! Demon Bunny! Finally, the fun part of the role-playing game began. The group stormed the battlefield with no restraint. They were led by Lilligree, who furiously swung her berserker sword in circles. And as the dice rolled in the institution, so did the heads of goblins in Hawthmodigal. It seems it is a good idea to occasionally vent your rage. It was a short, Battle. The plans of the Goblin King were thwarted. Lilligrim found the defeated monarch cowering beneath one of the support beams of the dam. Lily. Poor foolish Lily. That was a terrible mistake. He's a fucking potato. When she heard an ominous crack above her. When the pink floods had subsided, our heroes were faced with an incredible sight. The Valley of Unpleasant Memories. Will you look at that? I have to admit, I'm really blown away. We shouldn't be here. Ha! <laughs> You've always been quite the comedian, Snippo. No, I mean it. This valley is cursed. I heard that. Wait a second. Lily? What's wrong with her? These are all the dead fuckers because of Lily. Lily is a murderer! <laughs> Job, Lily, you have killed many people. Plus one D10. Do we get XP's now? Lily had 
had seen the truth. I'm sure you can imagine how she felt at that moment. You can't? Oh well. Who knows what really goes on in the mind of a little girl. Hi to him. You feel all right, little girl? <coughs> little girl. Hello. Uh, are you okay? I was worried, you know? Am I crazy? Or did it just get colder in here? Not sure, but we'll see you next video. Thanks for watching, assholes.